um, time management schedule. So one thing that I do is I set up my time, my schedule the night before. So a part of my night routine is to, to have my, um, my planner out and from five, my planner, the way it's designed, it starts at 5 a.m. and it has a couple lines for each, each hour. And so it starts at 5 a.m. And it, and it ends at 9 p.m. And for each line on my planner for each hour, I have something in there. So me, I wake up at five, sometimes 5.30 in the morning and I do my morning routine and then I go to the gym and exercise and then I'll drop my kids off to school and then I'll start my day. And so all of those things are written hour by hour in my planner. And that's how I'm able to operate my day efficiently and effectively because I don't allow outside things like, hey, somebody's going to call me at 12 o'clock and invite me to lunch, but I didn't have that in my schedule. So I have to say, hey, I can put you on the schedule for tomorrow. We can have lunch tomorrow because it's not it's not in, in, in my book for today. Um, and so just having that discipline with your time management, because time is something that we'll never get back. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to waste it. No, uh, that's not, nah, that's well said. I can't say that any better. And I do want to ask a question, you know, in regards to men having multiple streams of income, you know, they say that the average millionaire have about seven streams of income. And because of that, you know, people think that they have to just go and start up seven different businesses, seven different uh, different companies all at once. So how would you, you know, recommend someone to start building off their different streams of income? So um, one thing you have to do is plan and you have to figure out one, how many streams of income you want, and then two, how, like what um, industries or what ways do you want to get these different streams of income? So that's one thing that I did initially. And that's what led me into, you know, having eight different streams of income because I knew that I didn't want to put all of my eggs in one basket. And so I just, I, you know, I planned accordingly. And some, some of these streams of income, they, they organically just came out of having other streams. So like one of my streams of income is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing kind of just came out of me always referring, you know, different things. Um, another one of my streams of income is Toro and like renting out cars and, and slingshots here in Miami. So when people are coming to me for recommendations, I, you know, I'm, I'm effective with it. And so I give them my recommendation, but now I put a twist to it because I recommend things that I'm a, I'm a partner of, I'm, I'm an affiliate of. So that's one stream of income that I would definitely recommend to people is affiliate marketing because you are already referring people to these products like um like for example coinbase i refer people to coinbase and tell them hey you know get started with crypto but before i was doing before i became an affiliate with them i you know i wasn't getting paid to tell my brother and my cousin and my sister and all of these individuals hey you know get started with your crypto and so once i figured out hey i can become an affiliate with this company then um then i would you know, share the information, share the link. And obviously that became a stream of income for me. So, um, so yeah, I would just tell them one, get started with, you know, with something that you are already doing. Um, another thing I would tell um, anybody and everybody is also think about what you're good at, what, you know, what kind of skill set you have, because, you can share that with other people through um, having like a digital product. So one of my um, businesses is having, ha I have a slingshot uh, rental company. And with this company, what I did was that's just income on its own. So what I did was I actually created an ebook teaching other people how to start a slingshot rental company. 
And so that in, that digital ebook became its own stream of income, but it was already tied into what I was already doing. So that's where I would tell people to start. Just start with your skills. What can you teach people and create a digital product from there? Or just create a digital product from what you are already doing or what your business already is. Wow, 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 wow. That, that was a great way to definitely explain that. Um, and that leads me to my next question. You know, you retired at a young age, just 31. You know, most people don't reach that age um, to retire at that age. You know, mostly 65, 70 um, nowadays, especially inflation going up. Um, so what made you say, like, this is what, I'm going to do, I'm going to retire at 31. And how did you go about executing that with your different investment to say, this is time for me to leave? Yeah, so um, I actually left the nursing field at the height of the pandemic when um, it was actually July of 2020, July 4th of 2020, where when I said goodbye to the bedside, and primarily it was because of the conditions working during the pandemic. It was very hard and challenging. But the questions that I asked myself was, have I created enough streams of income or enough passive income that is going to replace my current income, replace my nine to five, replace my career? And so that's one of the things that I asked myself and the answer was yes. So once I figured out that my investments could, you know, pay for, you know, keep the lights on, keep the water on, you know, pay for my car note and all, all of these other expenses, then I said, okay, well, what about my time is, is, could I be doing something better with my time? is my job taking away from my business? And the answer also was yes. <laughs> that me working 12 hours a day um, at a hospital was actually taking away from me scaling my business. My business was staying pretty much stagnant because I wasn't able to put in that much time into it. So I said, okay, my investments can sustain my, my livelihood and my time can be de dedicated and devoted to scaling this business to where it really needs to be. So I made the decision to, to leave, to leave the bedside and to leave nursing. And now looking, you know, looking back, um, it was actually one of the best decisions that I made because I experienced a lot of growth just by having that, that freedom of time. I experienced a lot of growth and it's not only like growth as an entrepreneur, but also growth as a mother, because now today I have three children. So my other to my other um, children are, are young. They're two and three years old. And my son, he's 10. So I experienced growth as a mother because the time that I was away and working seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night, you know, I wasn't spending time with them. So I didn't know what their schedule was like, what their routine was like. All I knew is that they were, you know, being, being um, babysat by, you know, by my mother, which she, you know, was doing a phenomenal job. So when, once I, you know, had the opportunity to, to take over, then it really, you know, I honed in on this balancing act of being a full-time mom and a full-time entrepreneur. Mm 